I came in a rap game. I spent two fifty off the rip for promo. I seen that. Yeah, that wasn't nothing. You why know what get in the, Why get in the rap game? And also, I, I read this thing that said you were on Cash Money and you bought yourself out of contract. Yeah, I only signed because my lawyer told me to sign. I didn't even have to sign. I I was listening to the advice of a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? And but I rock with Stunner though. Stunner and Slim, real solid. It's, it's just I didn't have to sign it though. You know what I'm saying? Tell me that story. And I was only signed for six months. So, so just break that story down because, uh, again, without all of this other like you know uh, I want to call it almost expertise and like I think savviness that you have, like you could rap. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like some that you're like just winging it. Like like I think everybody who listens to your music be like this flow, not a rhyme. How did you how did you even? get into music like that and then and then explain the cash money situation oh i always could rap i could rap since i was eight years old i knew i could rap i knew i could rap anytime i felt like, mm -hmm. like okay i can go ahead and do whatever it's just i needed the money to um to um put myself out and market myself the way i wanted to so i was getting money it just i want to get enough to rap so i if i had 30,000, 40,000, that's not enough. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. once I caught on to this glitch and I made three, 400,000, I was able to spend 250 real quick. I can go buy all the jewelry I wanted, all that type shit. Then boom, I started getting booked. Mississippi booked me, Memphis booked me, Arkansas booked me. I was doing shows. I was doing four shows a week like it was water. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about bringing in all kinds of money. Independently. Four shows a week, every week. I lived on the road. No radio play, no nothing. I just had 10 songs all popping, doing millions of plays on YouTube. Doing, I didn't even know what streams was at first. So I didn't even put them on DSPs like Apple, Spotify. You only could get my shit on Spinrella. Boom, Spinrella. Ooh, Spinrella. Yeah, I'm just putting it out. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Spinrella, all the country towns listening on Spinrella. So my shit just circulating through there and I'm going to do shows. Then I transferred it over to DSPs and companies. My face was so good. I was streaming so much. Big companies will come in. My boy Alex, uh, shout out to him. He'll come give me 500000 and I pay him back 700000 Or he'll come give me 700000 I pay him back 900000 like it wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, so so kind of popped off really quickly for you so so how, how'd you kind of run into the uh the cash money situation my lawyer hit me and was like i know some people which was a fur you know how it's a furnishing label in the middle mm -hmm. and it was actually through a furnishing label to go to cash money so i met with them and they was cool with stunner and slim stunner and slim rock with me i came to the studio hit factory down in miami we linked what up year is this yeah this was man it had to be 2017 18 mm, okay 20, maybe 2018 because I was moving around and Stunner we did a deal nothing ever came into fruition because I wasn't trying to get under Republic system why not that's too it's too much for me it's too much to keep keep up with I like to keep up with my money so once it go to Republic it's a lot of accounting so when you gotta put in have a lawyer to put in a notice for them to send you your accounting oh yeah, yeah that's, that's a problem that's a whole process. But how did you how did you know it was gonna be that way if you never you never signed to a label that big? Yeah. I started reading contracts. Mm. Even though contracts are hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. Fifty pages. Yeah. There's no way a can then addendums and also yeah, like Yeah, <laughs> like when you gotta have another interpret a contract for you and yeah. it's English, <laughs> you don't need to sign it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If if somebody really with you, they're gonna break that down and bust it down the way you can understand it. You mm. know what I'm saying? But they they interpret it for you like it's another language. Yeah, no, of course. And then the lawyer can get over on you. Shout out to my lawyer. I got a lawyer who's good, man. But um, at that time, that lawyer, he was cool too. It's just shit. He doing music business. I, I look at it as music business. But and music business is bullshit. A lot of it, not all. Um, Empire do some good business. But um, they gave me a contract. And but shout out to Stunner because Stunner let me write out. I called him. I was like, "Hey, Stunner, um, I'm really trying to go back independent. I ain't really feeling going to a major, but I rock with you and Slim, though." So, so hold on. So when you signed, did you get an advance or anything? Yeah, they gave me an advance. Oh, okay, okay, they gave me an advance, but um, I didn't need that advance. I used to just walk around with four five hundred thousand on me because I did so many shows. So I would have four five hundred racks at all times on me. You know what I'm saying? Like so, so, so the advance is. That don't make no sense. Nothing. Yeah. I just heard Drake, Wayne, and Nicki. So I'm like, oh, I can get a feature with Drake, Wayne, and Nicki. I'm out of here. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, I used to go to the Hit Factory, Wayne right there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing to go get that feature or nothing like that. But, um, you know, I would just, I'd be up there so deep. I got 30 niggas with me. We recording. We high. We got them on drink. You know what I'm saying? Stunner coming through. If you notice, I got a bunch of songs with Stunner because he would hop on some songs. We'll shoot the video. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was only in a six-month period. Life is fast, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't even have time. I'm hopping in my own ecosystem, so I I don't even have time to be like, what's up with a Drake feature? What's up with a Nicki feature? You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really tripping, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. it was it's live. But um, I sat and thought about it. I'm like, damn, I don't really need Republic to get involved in my dealings. Um. So, and shout out to Republic. I don't know what they got going on because I never dealt with them. Yeah, but I was like, that's, brother, for reference for anybody who's watching, Republic is the house and the label house to some of the biggest artists in the world, from Post Malone to um, um, The Weeknd, Drake, Nicki. Um, I feel like everybody over there is Post Malone over there. Uh, it might be, but. Everybody else is over there. All the biggest artists are over there, which yeah. means you walk into that system, they're, they're going to handle you in the most corporate way possible. There you go. And I didn't feel like dealing with that. When you got to call somebody to call somebody, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. deal with the CEO. So, and then every label was showing interest. Like I flew out, talked to Interscope. They was cool. I talked to Sony. They was cool. Um, Probably like 98% of labels hit me up and, um, I met Stunner. I was like, okay, Stunner, real nigga. I just chopped it up with him. And um, but throughout the time I was recording at Hit Factory here and there. But we never did nothing major. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it it never went to where they was gonna put a full scale. They were ready to. They were ready to put a full scale promotions plan and everything, but I called hard on it. Cause I was like, okay, you know how major labels work. They put up a million, you damn near gotta pay back eight, nine. So I was like, nah, I don't like that. Yo, ain't that a finesse, man? It's a super finesse. It's the highest loan you can get in history. They this give you a million, a you gotta pay. Most artists, I would say, probably gotta pay back about if they give you a million, you probably gotta pay about eight, nine back. Somebody's gonna sit sit there and be like, nah, how? At least five, six. I Look, don't, yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. I, because I think people might think a million is just a million. Nah, man. Like, like it's, it's 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 even the way it's recouped is different. The things that you thought were non recoupable is gonna be re recouped off as well. You know what I mean? Like things that really is gonna help you and the label. They still taking out of your pocket. Crazy. Hey, we promoting the project, but we're charging you for the promotion of the project, even though you, us promoting the project is going to benefit us because we're also taking some of the profits. It's kind of crazy. They bleed you dry. Say literally bleeding you dry and then give you an advance. And then, but you, that's why a lot of artists probably got to make their money out touring. They got to tour a lot. Well, a lot of artists never seen a royalty statement. A lot of artists talk in advance. Will. They talk in advances and, and maybe if they get pub checks, that, that's sizable. For sure. But, but the majority of what they really care about is show money. A hundred percent. That's why a lot of, I, that's why I think, you know, and we were talking right before the interview about why the state of the music is what it is. If, You've never seen a royalty check from the music you're making, right? Yeah. If you've never seen a royalty check from the music you're making, you might just think, yo, let me just put out whatever to get popping, to go on the road, or to go do other shit. Because you're thinking about, that's that's how you'll make your money. Yeah, and a lot of artists just don't understand the business. You want to understand the business that you're in. It's like selling dope. You understand. You know what you're going to get. You put your eyes on the weed, or you put your eyes on whatever you're buying, and you... You understand it, what you sell it. You get what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people like you because you break it down on some real nigga shit. Like you, you'll break down a very complicated, which by the way, the music industry is very complicated, like, like you, shit. You know, and I tell people, make it simple for me. Yeah. I was just telling um somebody the other day, I was like, man, I ain't got time for all this extra shit around it. Make that shit simple. Well, I understand it. Cause I make people make it simple for me so I can make it simple for everybody else. Mm. If it's complicated, I feel like you trying to finesse. Because yeah, why yeah. is it so complicated? It's with all the terms and the... Yeah, you know all this mean? extra shit yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah, they, like, what are we doing here? By the time you started doing the question, it'd be like, well, we told you about this. You just didn't know what it meant. Like Man, that shit it, be it whispering actually, shit. Like, it'll be under there and light writing and... You know what I'm saying? 
So, so I'm guessing like a major label deal never was that appealing to you because of all the complexity. Once I got money, yeah. it wasn't that appealing because I was like, I'm gonna live like this anyway, and I could just I, I'm blessed to be I'm gifted to do music. It ain't like I'm I tried to make myself do music. I'm gifted to do music. That's just what I was born with. Some people born with some talent, but um, not saying I'm better than nobody else. But I was born with talent in a way with words. So. Once I started making money, it was one point I was like, man, fuck rap. Because where I'm from, it, it will, because since we didn't make it, it'll be like, fuck a rapper. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, um, we grew up watching like Gucci, Future, all them. And you know, they on some street shit still with they rap shit. Yeah. So we was on the same thing. Um, not fuck them, but we was just like, fuck a rapper. That was just our mentality. Yeah, like, fuck trying to be a rapper. Like, yeah, because we, we, we trapping. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once um the money came, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can go rap now comfortably, and I could spend this money on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. But I was popping for a long time, just under the radar. Like I was just popping. So, so, and I guess you know, I'm trying to get into your mindset with it. So, if you you got a couple hundred thousand, look like you're doing good. Why even sign? Period. Even though you know you you did go to Empire. And Empire, which obviously is just a different, like yes, a different beast. Yeah, Empire to to uh, Interscope is like at, at least you, you could probably pick up the phone and call Gazi, right? Like 100%. I'm pretty sure, yeah, like, you're yeah. not, like whoever who runs Interscope do not want to talk to you. <laughs> no, not, not Interscope. Yeah, Interscope I mean, I mean, got I'm, a whole well, chain of command. No, you got to go. I should be Republic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't even know. <laughs> I think do not want to talk to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. No one talks to nobody. You know what I mean? Exactly. Drake got to be the person to get that person. So, what made you sign that situation and then? You also get an uptick with the mainstream because you also do that song 24 with Baby. All right, so I signed because my lawyer convinced me. Mm. I'm going off, you know, they say consult what has been. So I'm like, shit, you're a lawyer. He know what he's talking about. Um, then um, when I did it, I called Stunner. I was like, Stunner, man, I'm really trying to go back independent. And he let me go back independent. He was like, all right, enough, just give me back on um, Whatever he told me to work out the details with the furnishing company anyway, so we worked that out and then I just paid that was them. Cool of him, yeah. He could, man, he's solid. Nah, nah, I fuck with, I fuck with baby. Yeah, stun or solid, man. He one of the solidest people in the metal music game I've met. You, you know, you know, what's so funny. Before I met him, right, and and, and saw things a little bit closer. Like, I, there was a lot of. There used to be a lot of like people. There was a lot of rumors about him that would make you think that he's a nigga that would try to fuck a nigga over. Nah, I ain't never seen that. Well, I'm, I agree. Yeah, but that was that was some of the narratives that came out in like you know music to kind of make it seem like which, which I think it's unfortunate because all my dealings with him or anytime you know ever since I've known him, he has been a solid dude. Yeah, he's solid. Agrees. He moved right. You know what I'm saying? When you see yeah. him, he moving like a boss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you don't you don't hear him saying much out here. When he yeah. speak, he speak whatever he got to say, and then he back to whatever he doing. Yeah. So he says, you'll sort that out. you sort it out. I'm guessing you'll send 250K. You had, two, you had 250 cash to send? That's true. I had it on me when oh, I was talking shit. to him. <laughs> I, was, I was counting up money when I was on the phone with him just because I used to have cash all the time. I was just I just had it on me. Like Yeah. I kept, I told you, four 500 everywhere I went to. Like cash? Guaranteed. I did so many shows and they paying cash that it'll just pile up. I'll be on the road for a month at a time. Four shows a week, just, it's just piling up. You never put it in the bank? Nah, cause it was, you know, and then it was just, it was just on me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So okay, so so you send that money over. Now you're a free agent. Yeah, for sure. What happens after that? I just kept got back to right, right back to it, and then Gazi um hit me up because I had did a song. I was like independent, like Gazi. Just something to something in the CPN robbery. And he heard that and then he hit me up. So people was telling me about Gazi anyway. They was like, if you want to, you know, do a partnership, go holla at Gazi. And Gazi pulled up to the crib and um he, you know, Gazi will push up on you. You know what I'm saying? He like to get in the field. So he he wanna know what's going on and see for himself. And um he came over and we chopped it up and then we did a partnership over there at Empire. And then that's when I put out Paranoia. Paranoia Gold now, the whole album, and then he helped with the promotion behind that and shit like that. But I, before then, right after I signed the Stunner, that's when I went and got uh, 500 grand from my boy. Boom. You know, I use other people's money. I use mine too, though. I don't mind. I know how to flip. But um, 
He did a deal with her. He go five hundred, give me back seven. Boom. So, so you went to your homie. You you got five hundred from him. Yeah, it was a, it was. A, he actually had a um a company where they'll give you money based yeah. on your catalog. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and you got three years to pay it back. I gave it back to him in three months. Huh? Here you go. Really? He gave me five hundred. Um, I gave him back seven. I didn't even have to. How use you flipping money like this? Come on, you, you got to give the secret out. I was just winning. Like my music was music going music crazy. Going up. Uh, is are you paying him back off as show money or just whatever? Everything was coming everything, in total. Everything. Okay, I'm getting show money. I'm getting streaming money. I'm streaming a hundred k a month at the time. Damn. Like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? And boom, then uh, he'll give me seven. I gave him back nine. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't nothing. That shit wasn't nothing. 